Good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome everyone who is here and anyone who may be watching on our live feeds. Uh, my sister Kelly and I um, will be helping lead worship today. I'm Caitlin, by the way, if anyone doesn't know me. <laughs> um, all right, everyone please stand for the ringing of the bell. Please remain standing if you are able for the responsive psalm. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall send the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the ways of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. And now we will sing the hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing.
Let us pray. O oh, great spirit, whose breath gives life to the world and whose voice is heard in the soft breeze, we need your strength and wisdom. Cause us to walk in beauty. Give us the eyes ever to behold the red and purple sunset. Make us wise so that we may understand what you have taught us. Help us learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. Make us always ready to come to you with clean hands and steady eyes. So when life fades like the fading sunset, our hearts come to you without shame. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we will have a special reading from Ryan Berry. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them, before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark and the clouds return to the rain, when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, when the grinders cease because they are few and those looking through the windows grow dim, when the doors to the street are closed and the sound of the grinding fades, when the people rise up at the sound of the birds, but all their songs grow faint. When people are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets, when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags itself along and desires no longer stir is stirred, the people go to their eternal home and mourners go about the streets. Remember him, for the silver cord is severed, the golden bowl is broke, before the pitcher is shattered in the spring, and the wheel is broken at the well, and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to the God who gave it. All right, thank you. Now we will have announcements. Um, if anyone has any announcements, you can come forward and I will start. Um, we would like to thank our web sponsors. Today we have the Vosbury family in celebration of Lucas's eighth birthday. And the Crass family in honor of the GRB class of 2021. Um, some other announcements. Um, this week, Friday, July 16th, uh, the Food Sense orders are due. Um, Sunday and Thursday at 7 p.m. are AA meetings, as, long as, one, as well as Wednesday and Saturday at 8.30. al -Anon will be at Wednesday at 7 p.m. and al will be at Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, for the rest of our announcements, we have the trustees are looking for those that can help with maintenance jobs around the church. Please contact a trustee or the church office for more information. The AV team is looking for multiple persons interested in helping out during service when one of them cannot be here. Please contact Dan Crass, the AV coordinator, or the church office if you are interested. And our Food Sense coordinator, Amanda Allen, is also looking for someone she can train as a backup for when she is unable to be here for pickup. Scares you. You think I'm going to sing, huh? I'm not. I'm Karen O'Brien, and I am a member of this church. I'm also part of what I call the Think Team. I'm sorry, the Think. <laughs> I'm not thinking. The Think Team. Some of you call us the trustees, but frankly, I never know what that means, so I prefer to use the word thing team. Presently, there are eight members. Lori Wright, Vinny Facacia, Dane Johnson, John Smith, Richard Stellingworth, Ryan Green, Jim Watkins, and me. 
we worry about the things that make this church run. I would like to spend a few minutes updating you on what has been happening. Despite COVID and with every required precaution, we have continued to meet in person, by text, and by email. We've worked hard to keep things running, so as we face an end of COVID restrictions, we will be ready to get back to full functioning and participation. A quick rundown, and I know I will not remember it all. We've been dealing with leaking roofs, broken septic tank, furnace, boiler, and air conditioning issues. Some of these issues have been addressed, some are presently being addressed, and some are still waiting their turn. To name a few of the ongoing projects, this year, the pavilion and all the benches and tables have been painted. This has entailed many hours. Remember that great picnic we had before COVID? I, for one, am very anxious to be able to do that to get again as a congregation. Someone has volunteered to shampoo our sanctuary or Narthex uh, rug every six months. Um, every summer, our lawns get mowed. Every winter, someone shovels our walks and puts down salt. Someone takes those bottles and cans to the recycle facility. Hornet's nests have been removed. The Pauly's clothing box is emptied. A new security camera has been installed. The lights in the sanctuary are replaced when necessary. We've replaced a hot water tank, a stove, and a dryer in our parsonage. The pole in our parking lot has been straightened and a brighter light has been installed. Someone repairs our lawnmower and our snowblower so that it is functional every year. Our flowers are planted and cared for by our side door. Food is purchased and boxes for those in need are delivered. A cement pad has been replaced so that an emergency exit is safer. The large cross out front has been rewired with new light bulbs uh, so that it shows up in our community, especially to our schools. Our sanctuary is decorated each season. We've upgraded our phone system, giving direct access to Noah's Nursery when our office is closed. We've extended our Wi-Fi so that Noah's Nursery has Wi-Fi. We're working to get a better lighting at the end of our driveway as you pull into our driveway. Recently, we have taken on a major project. Our sanctuary, Narthrix, office spaces, downstairs nursery room, the meeting room, and the Sunday school room are all heated by one common boiler. That means the hot water has to travel a very long way. The system has never worked well. We've worked to augment it with electric space heaters. We have dealt with zones going down every year. Basically, we have continued to bandage the problem. This year, the trustees have decided to make this a priority. We have taken on a major financial commitment. We are addressing the issue with major changes to the delivery system. By the fall, our new system will be more efficient and potentially cost savings. All of this is good news. But like any homeowner, we cannot rest and be satisfied with what we have accomplished. We need to continue to update. We cannot do it alone. You, as members of this congregation, have always been there over and over again. Once again, we are asking for your help to keep our church properties up. Our kitchen needs to be thoroughly cleaned in preparation for once again fellowship time after church. I, for one, have missed the socializing and great food. Noah's Nursery needs a new floor. This important mission helps so many of our young children. Our parking lot is aging and needs to have the weeds removed to slow down additional cracking. Our church building needs to be power washed. We need to paint our wooden signs the sagging floor in our kitchen needs to be addressed. Our shed needs a new door. Now I know all of these cannot be done 
this year, but slowly we will continue to work on these as we continue to do the things that come up routinely. Some of these projects are simple and we can get them done in a few days. Others are bigger and will need more help. Our main entrance and sanctuary needs to be reviewed for wheelchair accessibility. Like all organizations designed to help others, our church needs money to do these projects. It is up to us to be creative in finding ways to support our church. In the past, we have had golf tournaments and chicken barbecue and chicken biscuits and gravy dinners. We have had auctions. We've sold pies and cakes. The ideas are only limited by our imagination and our energy. Money will always be an issue. And if you are able, sending money in support of these projects would be greatly appreciated. Please indicate your donation that you would like it used for any one of these or all of these projects. But while money is limited, we do have something in great supply, and that is you, the church membership. You and or family and friends can choose to adopt any one of these projects. Make a day of it, and you can use our brand new clean pavilion for lunch or dinner. We will be happy to honor your efforts at our announcement and our web ministry. COVID has done many things to hurt us economically and socially. It has permanently changed our lives and the way we think. More than ever, the role of churches is needed to build back, to support, and to repair. Fulton First is in a unique position because we are right across from the junior high school where every child in Fulton will attend. Our message begins with our parents sending our message of hope and love and peace. Our youth are our future. Please sign up to help us physically or financially. This message is for all of you, not just the people who are here in the sanctuary, but for all of you listening at home. We need your help. For those of you at home that can come in person, please know that you are missed. For those of you here, look around for someone we are missing. Drop a note, make a phone call, check on them. We are a family and this is our home. As we started, Emily was playing my favorite hymn. She didn't know that, but it's one that's so relative, and it's the first time I ever heard it was in this church. It's called, Here I Am, Lord. And the response from the person to God's question of who can help, Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Oh. And I'm going to be passing around sign-up sheets. If you feel that there's anything you can or are willing to do, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. All right. Now we will be um, moving on to the offertory. Please join me in prayer. Lord, you offer a redemptive inheritance sometimes beyond our imagination. You graciously bestow each of us with your wisdom and grace, forgiveness and love. Joyously, we share these tithes and offerings. As you call us to give, you remind us to place our hopes and dreams in your love and grace. Thank you, God, for giving us your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray in his name, amen. May the ushers please come forward.
and I will be doing a, viol a duet <laughs> on our violins, um, and we're going to be playing Americana. Thank you so much, Kelly and Caitlin, for that lovely item. I'm going to invite um, the church, well, whoever we have here. I see we have, um, we have Everly here. <laughs> right. So Everly, we can sit here. I is it okay to sit, gentlemen? Can sit here with Everly. I'm going to sit right here with Everly, and I want you to know how good I feel this morning with all the participation of the younger ones. It's really a good feeling to be able to sit back, relax, and enjoy all that they are doing. I think I think um, Caitlin and Kelly are doing a marvelous job leading us, so let us put our hands together for them. Thank you very much. And I would like to um, say thanks to Ryan for reading that passage from, I wonder if you can call that name, Everly. It is Ecclesiastes. You think you can say that? Ecclesiastes. So that's a book from the Old Testament, and we usually refer to the writer of that book as the preacher, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, a call to remember your creator in the days of your youth. And when you study that passage, you will recognize that it is saying something about what will happen to each of us. A time will come when we are not going to be able to see as well as we can see now. A time is going to come when, when we are not going to be able to walk as, 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 as we walk now. You know, there are going to be all kinds of physical changes. That is what that passage is saying. So while you are young, while you are strong, while you have the energy, this is the best time to remember your Creator as you were doing. You remember your creator when you come to church and you worship. 
You remember your creator when you pray, you communicate with your creator. And you remember your creator when you read your Bible. So there are many ways to remember your creator. And as I sit here, I'd like to say thanks to Emily, our pianist. Um, Emily was recently married, yes. <laughs> Emily was recently married, but, but as I looked across, I saw um, a very tall, handsome young man <laughs> in the congregation. Now, he's been here before, but there's something that is even more special about him now. That is Joe. Joe is Emily's husband of what? Two weeks? Three weeks. Three weeks. Wow, it's longer than I thought. Now, Emily, Emily and Joe have been married for three weeks. Next week, my wife and I are going to be celebrating 30 years of marriage. So you see, you have a long way to go, Joe and Emily. But I believe you will get there. I, I, I was able to spend some time with Emily and Joe ahead of their wedding. Um, I had the honor of officiating at the wedding. And from what I have seen, I am confident that they will do well in their marriage. So welcome, Joe. Good to see you, Emily. And welcome as well to Jasmine. I'll say a little bit more about Jasmine later. We have our gentlemen at the back. You, you know those gentlemen, yeah. Emily? Okay, so let me tell you who they are. On, on the left here, we have Daniel Crast. Can you see him? Okay. Yes. Then we have uh, Richard Folds, who was standing over Daniel. That's Richard. And then we have Andrew Gilbert. Um, Andrew is our recently appointed webmaster. In fact, he succeeded our brother over here, Joe Abati. I'm just letting you know some things about the church. Um, so Andrew is now our new webmaster and has been doing a, a good job. Um, he and David Vosbury over here. Can you see him? It's difficult to see David, but your eyes are better than mine. Well, they worked on upgrading our phone system um, along with the trustees. So things have been happening, and we appreciate that. And um, I'd like to say thanks to Karen O'Brien. She was the lady that came up to the microphone there. Karen O'Brien, you know her. Well, you know, Karen sounded so much like a preacher today. Where's Karen? Yes, Karen. Now I know who I can turn to um, on an occasion when I might need a preacher. <laughs> a wonderful appeal. And, and thank you for updating us on some of the things that have been happening in this congregation. We really appreciate what you're doing. And we do have plans. We just need to discuss it in our admin board. But we do have plans for a church picnic before the summer is over uh, to use our, our um, newly upgraded pavilion. So we have plans for that. And we have plans for a, a, a night of vacation Bible school. So we want these things to get out there. We're going to be discussing it with the, in the admin board and confirming everything. And then in the fall, we hope to get back to our, our um, fellowship time after worship. So there are some exciting things ahead. Now, um, there's so much I would like to say today, Everly. I'm going to ask our brother Dan to put a word on the, on the screen there. Can you see the word, Everly? And all of us, the word is habit. Habit. Now... I don't know how much you know about habits, but habits are patterns of behavior that we develop. To make it very simple, the habits are patterns of behavior. Um, you want to tell me a habit that you have, if you don't mind? Anything that comes to mind? Brushing teeth. Brushing teeth is a habit. That's a very good habit. No, that's a good habit. <laughs> Brushing your teeth. Most of the time. <laughs> I don't quite understand, but I won't ask for an explanation now. 
<laughs> but it's a good habit to brush your teeth, to take care of your teeth. You know, by the way, that you, um, you, you get only two sets of teeth in a lifetime. So it is, and, and teeth are meant to last a lifetime. So you have to take care of them. So it's good to have good habits when it comes to your teeth, okay? Now, habits, I learned when I was young, my mother taught me this, my parents, by the way, they would have celebrated 56, no, 57 years of marriage on the 9th, if they were alive, 57. That was, gone, that was um, the 9th of June, that was when Friday. Friday would have been their 57th anniversary. So they taught me about habits, and they trained me to develop certain habits. Because they told me habits are hard to break. Let me, let, me, let me demonstrate how hard habits are to break. So we have the word habit, right? I'm going to ask Dan to do something for me. Remove the H. You still have a bit of that habit. You notice? Even when you try to break habit, you still have a bit of it. <laughs> Remove the A. And even when you take away the H and the A, they're still bit. You notice that? That's how hard a habit is to break. And then if you remove the B, you still have it. <laughs> you still have that habit. And if you remove the I, there's still a t of it. <laughs> so they're hard to break. You can take it down now, Dan. So habits are hard to break. And that is why it is so important when we are forming these habits that we try to form good, positive habits. And brushing your teeth and some other things that I'm sure you're going to think about when you go back to your seat, those, those, those positive habits you should try to encourage. Now, Jesus had some habits too. You think so? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had some habits. And I'll mention two of them. He had a habit of getting up early in the morning and going to a lonely place to pray, to commune with God. That, that, that was one of Jesus' habits, and it is a very good habit that we can practice as well, the habit of praying. Get into the habit of praying, of saying your prayers in the morning, in the night. And I like to pray before I have a meal. So get into the habit of praying. Another habit that Jesus had was going to the synagogue. That's the, that was the Jewish place where they learned to, where it was the Jewish place of education and of worship. So he had a habit of going to worship. That is a good habit. You are here today. I see you and, and your sister and some other children in church on a regular basis. That is a very good habit that you must continue to keep. Never break that habit. Now, there are certain bad habits. I'm not going to mention them because um, I'm not going to mention them here. But you can think about them. But if you find yourself having certain bad habits, you should try to break them. Now, sometimes we are dealing today with um, high school graduates and those in college. Sometimes college students develop certain habits that they have to be careful about. For example, they might have assignments and they're working hard. And they might find themselves eating late at night and not exercising as much, right. well, it wouldn't show too much on someone like Emily. No, but I promise I have not worked out so much. <laughs> but there are some, you know, they eat late, they don't work out as much as they should, and that's not good. So a good habit in terms of physical, a physical habit is to exercise, get into the habit of exercising, get into the habit of praying, Get into the habit of coming to church, which you do already. Hold on to those habits. And when you form good habits, you will find that no matter where you go, 
it will be hard to break those good habits. So thank you for being here today. Take our greetings to your sister and to your friends in school and continue to practice the good habit that you have right now. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity for worship. Thank you for Everly and all the children of this congregation and the young people and all who are here today, Lord. Send your blessings upon us, we pray, and continue to guide us and we pray that we will all develop good, positive habits that will help to make us better people. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we ask these prayers. Amen. Thank you for coming. A hand for Ev Everly, please. God bless you. And now... We're going to have a special item, another special item by Jasmine Fowler. Uh, she will be accompanied by Emily, um, Emily Hall Carasquillo. Um, they will do an item now, and we welcome them.
my dear sisters and brothers, today being the day that we celebrate the achievements of our students, I thought it would be a good idea to invite one of them to present a message today. So I invited Jasmine to do so. So in place of my usual reflection, um, Jasmine will take the next few moments to share a message entitled Salt and Light. There's going to be a reading from Matthew, which she will do, and then she's prepared a message, and I trust that you will find it inspiring. Now, Jasmine is a recent graduate from the G. Ray Bodley High School here in Fulton. Um, yes, that's an accomplishment. And um, she will be attending the Ithaca College in the fall, um, where she will pursue a Bachelor of Arts degree in music performance. Um, as you can see, Jasmine enjoys playing the flute. Um, she also enjoys reading. And she told me that she likes public speaking, and she's working at becoming an even more effective public speaker. So kindly help me to welcome Jasmine, and we will sit back and listen to the message that God has placed on her heart that she will share with us. Over the last six months or so, Jasmine has attended worship on a fairly regular basis and has blessed us with her music. Now we look forward to hearing her message in words. Jasmine. So before I start with my message, I would like you all to rise up and come with me to read the message of Mark 5, 13 through 16, a.k.a. Believers are salt. Math, this is Mark. I'm sorry, I'm at Matthew 5, 13, 16. Right. Remember your creator and, oh, wrong one. Sorry, forgot to flip it. <laughs> sorry, I am not used to this. All right. Sorry. Okay. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses the saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it in a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Thank you. Uh, you may all be seated. All right. All right, so I will be starting my reflection, salt and light, from Matthew 5, 13 through 16. I did include a translation version, which you will hear of the New King James Version, in my reflection. Following the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells his followers that people who receive these blessings matter. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of in the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 13 through 16, and that is the New King James Version. If you are a follower of Jesus, living the Beatitudes, you matter. You have an important role to play because you are the salt of the earth. Salt preserves, and Christians help preserve what is good in the culture. Note that salt, to be effective, 
must be in contact with the meat or fish it is to preserve. To be effective, we must be involved where we work and where we live. This puts us in attention because we dominate culture doesn't, doesn't necessarily like us. The majority of the time, living according to the butides may make us more successful in work, but we need to be prepared for the times that it doesn't. What we will do if showing mercy, making peace, or working for justice jeopardize our position at work, withdrawing from the world is no answer for Christians, but it is difficult to live in the world, ready to challenge its ways at any time. In Matthew 5, 10 through 12, Jesus acknowledged the reality of perse persecution, persecution, but in our context with the culture, we must retain our saltiness or distinctiveness. It's a balancing act we're called upon to maintain. You are the light in the world. The job description of a Christian is not only to maintain personal holiness, but also to touch the lives of everyone around us. At work, we touch many people who do not encounter Christ in church. It may be our most effective place to witness to Christ, but we have to be careful about how we witness for Christ at work. We are being paid to do our work, and it would be dishonest to stink our employers by using work time for evangelism. Moreover, it would be dishonorable to create divisions at work or a hostile environment for non-believers. We must avoid any possible taint of seeking self-promotion by proselytizing, and we always run the risk that our failings at work may bring shame on the name of Christ, especially if we seem to be enthusiastic about evangelism, but shoddy if actual work. <laughs> With these dangers, how can, be, how can we be salt and light at work? Jesus said, our light is not necessarily in the witness of our words, but in the witness of our deeds, our good works. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. The Beatites have spelled out some of those good works in humility and submission to, good, to God. We work for right relations, for merciful actions, and for peace. When we live as people of blessings, we are the salt and light in the workplace, in our homes, and in our nation. Thank you, Jasmine, for sharing that message from Matthew chapter 5, part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And you see what a challenge it is to come and stand in front of so many people and present a message. So I'm glad that you appreciate that. But we appreciate your message today. Thank you so much. And we wish you continued success in your, in your education. And we look forward, we know you're going far, all the way to Ithaca, but we look forward to having you um, on those occasions when you're gonna be in the area. So thank you very much and may God continue to strengthen you and use you effectively as salt and light wherever you find yourself. God bless you. At this time, we are going to have the distribution um, of scholarships, and we are inviting Mrs. Mary Jane McGrath, who is the chairperson of our education committee, to come at this time and to announce those who will be receiving the scholarships. And um, if you're here, you'll come and receive your scholarship. If um, the persons are not here, then someone can receive on their behalf. And then following this, we'll have another special item, the closing prayers and the closing hymn and benediction.
morning. Um, as Pastor Niall says, I'm uh, part of the Education Memorial Fund. And last year we had a lot of donations and we had a lot of money that was raised. And I couldn't have done it all myself because I had a committee, which was wonderful. So anyway, less said the better. And if I could have them come up individually, if you're here, uh, I have Ryan Berry. Chester Institute of Technology and he is doing very well. Congratulations Ryan. And whenever Ryan is around, he's in church. God bless you and continued success Ryan. You may return to your seat. Okay, we already heard a synopsis of our national but we're going to get her a scholarship anyway. <laughs> You didn't recognize my I didn't recognize my little popcorn girl. Do you remember that, Sierra? Sierra. About Sierra the popcorn Scott girl? Graduated from the G. Ray Bodley High School and will be attending the Onondaga Community College in the fall. And Kelly Kaza. Sons. And there's one here for um, Jeffeth Niles. I'm going to ask his mother um, to come forward and receive this on behalf of our son, Jeffeth, who's a student at SUNY Oswego as well, a music major there, and will be continuing his education there in the fall. Um, Jeffeth um, provides music at the Brewerton United Methodist Church, and that's why we missing from around. Sister Mary Jane, and I trust that the committee will continue to function and um, you will continue to support the work that the committee does. Uh, we've also um, provided a campership. Uh, is that? Oh, that's right. I forgot him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just learned it him yesterday in the middle of. It's Hayden Massach. Okay, he will be going to um, Casa Wasso, and he is the son of Jen Whitney. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May God bless you and keep up the good work. Help you down these stairs. Oh, yeah, you don't want me going to the stairs. <laughs> and now we're going to have a special item. Um, His item is on video. Um, it's a scholar song that he will be sharing with us. Welcome, Japheth. My name is Japheth Niles, and I would just like to say thank you for the scholarship that you have provided for uh, students like me here in the church. And the song that I will be playing and attempting to sing <laughs> will be um, Lord and Savior, true and kind. I hope you enjoy.
all our young people are so talented and this congregation will continue to provide opportunities for all of you to display your talent and use your talent to the glory of God. Congratulations and continued success to all of you. Let us have our closing prayers at this time. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We receive greetings from those who are joining us online, greetings from our online listeners, and they are sending appreciation for the beautiful music provided today. We heard from our brother Tom Anderson, who says he'll be going to Van Doan Nursing Home for two to three weeks for physical therapy. And so we remember him and others at this time. We pray for our web sponsors, the Vosbrae and Crass families. Lord, protect them and keep them. Make them a blessing upon the earth and keep them safe from any who would seek to do them harm. We pray for our birthday celebrant, Lucas, on his eighth birthday. We pray that his days will be multiplied and years will be added to his life. We remember him and all celebrants today and pray that your favor will be upon them, Lord. We pray for those who recently graduated, particularly those from the G. G. Ray Bodley High School, whom we honor today, that they will continue to experience success along with all our other um, students, those in college, as they pursue their, uh, their goals. We pray that they will remember you, Lord, their creator, and will not allow anything to cause them to turn away from worshiping and serving you. We pray that in all their ways they will acknowledge you and that you will direct their path. We pray for all who are sick, those with cancer, those on dialysis, those with injuries they sustained in accidents, those with psychological and emotional problems, those infected with COVID or whatever the disease may, might be. We remember before you, Lord, Lenny Falstick, Asher Samson Florizic, Peter De Young, and especially his wife Anika at this time, Tom Anderson, Jean Hare, Bob Carpenter, and others who are not doing well today. O oh, great physician, we pray that they will be healed and mended and made whole. Bless them with an abundance of peace and security. We pray for those who work as health care providers, that you will continue to strengthen and equip them, Lord, for the service they have to perform. We remember those who grieve today, that they will know your presence, your comfort, and will have hope. We pray that those who have died will rest in peace. We pray for this country and all nations and islands, for those who govern and are governed, that there will be justice, equity, freedom, and prosperity for all. We remember the Republic of Haiti uh, with its current troubles. We pray that justice and order will be restored in that land. We pray for the church, that we will proclaim the message and persist in, in, in proclaiming that message, whether it is convenient or not, rebuking, correcting, and encouraging with great patience and teaching. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us to be salt and light, and we pray that we will continue to be a distinctive people who shine the light of Christ, through whom the light of Christ shines in this dark world. We pray 
that there will be workers willing to go into the harvest, which is plentiful. The workers are few, but the harvest is plentiful. Lord, we pray that you will send forth workers to the harvest. Thank you, O oh kind and loving God, for being with us today. Thank you that you will go with us as we leave this place. Bless us all as we go in and as we come out. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will close with the hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, especially for our college students. Take the name of Jesus with you wherever you go. Precious name is a closing hymn. Receive the benediction, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and a great week.